detectives search through the home of a Kansas City family desperately searching for clues to find a missing baby. The man remains missing after a search effort comes up short. KOMU 8 News at 9 starts now. A month-long trend continues to keep money in your wallet. And a new survey shows just how much you've been saving. And getting behind the wheel of a car, never a good idea if you've been drinking. But new research shows even the tiniest bit of alcohol can have a very big effect. All right, thanks, Michael. MU football players run, jump, and sweat. They certainly do. And this is the weirdest job interview you'll probably ever see. It's next in sports. Parking meter prices on the rise, and so are the frustrations of those paying. A surprising verdict in a surprisingly high-profile murder case. Another person threatened suicide from a new downtown parking garage. KOMU 8 News First at 5 starts now. Live from Studio 8A, coverage you can count on in high definition. This is KOMU 8 News First at 5. A jury found Casey Anthony not guilty of killing her two-year-old daughter. Good afternoon, I'm Angie Bailey. And I'm Sarah Hill. That verdict comes after just 11 hours of deliberation. The latest live from Jay Gray in Florida. Good evening. As you might imagine, the intensity, the energy stepped up considerably here outside the Orange County Courthouse this afternoon with news that the jury had decided Casey Anthony's fate. The charge of first-degree murder. Jay Gray. In news closer to home, another incident at Columbia's newest downtown parking garage today has city officials talking about safety changes. KOMU 8's Blake Hansen was on the scene earlier today. So, Blake, I understand that everything turned out okay in this incident, right? Yeah, that's right, Angie. Uh, yeah, Blake Hansen, KOMU 8 News. Well, the wise has turned out to be another pretty decent day today with quite a bit of sunshine. Dave, two community sites are being constructed in Joplin, south of the airport. Anyone not able to find housing will be eligible to occupy a FEMA trailer in one of the two trailer parks. Joplin provided the land to FEMA for no cost and no cost to the residents as well. The city of Fayette is no longer under a boil advisory. Fayette has been under that advisory since June 30th, but it's lifted now. River flooding in Montauk County is still causing some residents to find another way home. Missouri 179 is closed on both north and southbound lanes in Sandy Hook. Water levels have gone down since this weekend, dropping to about eight, eight inches. Residents in the area say the road seems to flood every year, but this has been the worst. They say flooded roads just come with the season. It's a pain in the butt because you got to go around gravel, but like I say, all in all, if you live down here a while, you just get used to it. Just drive through it and go around. According to MoDOT's website, Missouri 179 is the only road closed due to flooding in mid-Missouri right now. Columbia residents will soon have a new path that connects to the MKT Trail. Work on the County House Greenway Trail is underway. That one-mile trail will connect a large residential area around Stadium Boulevard and College Park to the MKT Trail, allowing for easy access. Steve Sata with Parks and Recreation says the city needs more connector trails like this one. I think these connector projects are just invaluable to the overall trail uh, system that we've got in allowing people to, you know, basically ride to the trail uh, out of their neighborhoods rather than uh, load the bike up. The trail will run from the intersection at Stadium and College Park down the hill from the Forum Shopping Center to the existing Twin Lakes Trail that connects to the MKT Trail. That trail will be completed by the fall. Well, MoDOT is paying four mid-Missouri communities more than a half a million dollars to keep children safer on the road. The four communities are Holt Summit, Russellville, St. James, and Pettis County. They'll use the money for sidewalk construction, sign and crosswalk improvements as well. Holt Summit has seen improvements from grants from the Safe Routes to School program. Oh, it's very nice. Very, very nice. And easier for people to drive past the school during that time, and I'm sure it's easier to pick up the kids. 16 communities around the state share the $3.4 million grant this year, and MoDOT chose them from 126 applications. Fireworks are not cause for alarm in Fulton. The city has allowed residents to set off fireworks this year. The Fulton Fire Chief says Independence Day was actually quieter than in years past. According to the fire department, there were no fires due to fireworks. The lift on the ban also helped boost firework sales in the city. One Fulton woman sold many more fireworks than she expected. 
we've done a lot better this year. Uh, I'd say close to twice. Well, it's over what we've done before. I won't say twice, but it's, it's, a, it's a good percentage over what we've sold before. Peterson plans to donate some of her profits to Kingdom Christian Academy. She says volunteers from the community helped her run the fireworks stand. The first day after the holiday weekend, the Columbia Lunch in the Park program served 105 lunches at noon today. About 120 volunteers helped with the program. The director of the Voluntary Action Program says the program has served about 600 more lunches in June compared to last year. And getting behind the wheel of a car, never a good idea if you've been drinking. But new research shows even the tiniest bit of alcohol can have a very big effect. Women who maintain a healthy lifestyle, do they also have a healthy heart? Tomorrow may bring a chance of shower or two, maybe a rumble of thunder. Temperatures will be just a little cooler than they might otherwise be. That's next on KOMU 8 News at 5. We want to chat with you right now at livestream.com slash KOMU 8 TV. We're also chatting on our G Plus as well. You are looking high atop the city of Columbia. This is KOMU 8 News first at 5. Coverage you can count on. Now, your live Doppler 8 first alert weather with Chief Weathercaster Dave Schmidt. Fewer Americans are contracting a certain type of cancer. But people aren't getting screened as much. That's in a health report. In your health news today, women who follow a healthy lifestyle have a significantly lower risk of sudden cardiac death. Researchers at Harvard's medical school study the medical records of more than 80,000 women. They found those who followed a low-risk lifestyle, meaning they didn't smoke, they had a normal weight, they exercised for at least 30 minutes a day and ate healthy food, had a 92% lower risk of sudden cardiac death. Even a small amount of alcohol can lead to a big risk for injuries in a car crash. Researchers at the University of California, San Diego, studied national data on fatal car crashes from 1994 to 2008. They found a blood alcohol concentration that was barely detectable. 0 0.01 was still linked to accidents that were 36% more severe, those in which no alcohol was found to be involved. And colon cancer cases continue to drop, but 22 million people who need to be screened still haven't been. New data from the CDC finds there were more than 60,000 fewer cases of colon cancer in 2007 compared to 2003 and 30,000 fewer deaths. Despite the progress that's been made, doctors say about a third of adults are not up to date with their colorectal cancer screenings. We'll be right back. Marines work to prepare for President Obama's drawback of troops. And the final space shuttle launch may be delayed a day or two. KLMU aides Danny Spielock has those stories in your First Nation report. Sarah, thank you. Let's start tonight in Afghanistan. U.S. Marines continue to work on President Obama's gradual drawdown there. Marines in the Lockhe area of Helmand province have begun preparations for a reduction of troops and transfer of security to locals. Since the arrival of U.S. Marines in Lockhe in April of last year, Taliban fighters have been pushed out of the area. Security remains at the top of the agenda as Marines strive to build relations with locals. And now we're going to move on to Iraq. Officials say at least 35 people were killed in a double bombing north of Baghdad today. Police say the first blast in the town of Taji was a car bomb outside a city council building. As people gathered to help the victims of the explosion, a roadside bomb went off. Taji is located about 12 miles north of Baghdad. We're going to move on to Iran now. Iran's foreign ministry said today that the Islamic Republic is willing to resume nuclear negotiations with the West. Iran has been feuding with the West over its nuclear program, which it says is peaceful and intended solely for generating electricity. But the U.S. and Europe fear the program is aimed at making nuclear bombs. Iran's nuclear negotiations also failed earlier in January after the Islamic State refused to halt its uranium enrichment. And we're going to go back to the United States of America now. In Florida, the countdown to the very last space shuttle launch is just about to begin, but NASA managers aren't optimistic that the weather is going to cooperate Friday for the final launch of the 30-year-old shuttle program. NASA's weather officer says thunderstorms are possible mid-morning Friday, just about the time the shuttle Atlantis is scheduled to lift off for a 12-day mission to resupply the International Space Station. And that's your look around the world tonight. Sounds good. And today's photo finish, some feathery friends are waiting for a ride. This is KOMU 8 News. First at 5, coverage you can count on. 
And welcome back. Another look at our forecast for the evening hours. Should be quite pleasant, actually, as we work our way back through the 70s. Overnight low tonight, about 68 degrees. Tomorrow, periods of showers at times, possibly a rumble of thunder or two with a high about like today at 88. Well, it would be jumper at Columbia's downtown parking garage today has city officials talking about potential changes. KOMU 8's Blake Hansen joins us live with the very latest on that. Blake. Yeah, Angie, good news today. I arrived on scene shortly after police coaxed the man down and convinced him not to jump. But there was an incident last week and an incident two, uh, about two months ago now uh, where a woman did jump off and uh, killed herself in that incident. So as all of these incidents combined has some city officials talking about this. There's nothing officially on any sort of agenda or no plan yet. There's a city council meeting tonight. It's possible that that comes up during the comment section, according to one city council member. Still, though, no official plans. Reporting live in Columbia, Blake Hansen, KOMU 8 News. All right, Blake, thanks a lot. Missouri Law School applications are down, and the University of Missouri is not immune. Applications peaked at 1,024 last year. They fell to 845 for this coming fall. Many feel the economy is to blame. Fewer jobs, fewer applicants. But one law student says he isn't worried. As far as myself being uh, concerned about finding a job when I graduate, I'm not too overly concerned about it. And I think a good way to not be too worried about that myself personally is kind of keep my options really wide open. The MU Law School is increasing its promotional materials in an effort to draw in students and alumni. And here's tonight's photo finish. Doug and Sandy Gracie of Rocky Mount found some friends waiting for a ride. Friends indeed there. And Chris Thomas sent us a picture of his seven pound catfish. We want to see more of those photos wow. and the stories behind them. We'll put them on KOMU 8 News at 5 and 6. Just email them to share it at KOMU.com. There's a cute little guy. This little guy just poked his head in the studio with the help of uh, Grandpa Jim Reek. This is Jace Reek. He's out here at the station right now. He's a cutie. He's a little over a year old. We want to connect with you on Facebook and Twitter. Also check out the latest stories all the time, 24-7 on KOMU.com. We'll see you at 6. Parking meter prices on the rise, and so are the frustrations of those paying. Children rocket into recycling, learning to save the earth with fun. Joplin City Council puts a hold on people trying to rebuild. KOMU 8 News at 6 starts now. From Studio 8A, coverage you can count on in high definition. This is KOMU 8 News at 6. Today, Joplin City Council voted to place restrictions on home rebuilding. Good evening, I'm Angie Bailey. And I'm Nina Moyni. And for Jim, thanks for joining us. The city says it is putting safety first for residents. KOMU 8's Todd Tuminia joins us with details on the rebuilding hold. Nina and Angie, the city, Joplin City Council placed a 60-day hold on building permits for new houses in the severely damaged parts of the city. The public information office, Lynn Onstott, told me the hold is designed to encourage residents to be as safe as possible as they rebuild. Onstott says crews are clearing an estimated 75 to 125 lots of debris a day right now. That's because FEMA has agreed to pick up 90% of the debris removal cost until April, August 7th, excuse me. Now, after that August 7th deadline, cleanup crews can estimate $3 million a day in Joplin. Onstott says she understands why residents are concerned, but says safety is the most important thing. Utilities throughout the area are turned off, and some power lines are still even down, so rebuilding is a little bit difficult right now. FEMA is currently in the process of housing, housing some of those victims. Cammy Waits' Ellie Spilliards joins me to tell us about a temporary solution to housing some displaced families. Right. Well, FEMA trailers arrived a week ago, and families began moving in two days later. I recently met up with the first family to move in, and they were more than happy to give us a tour of their new home. Oh, my God. I was so excited. FEMA trailers are still arriving and more people are getting new homes. In fact, while you were there, Rosie actually got some good news. She did. She found out her best friend just found out she'd be moving into her own trailer soon. And again, clouds will be coming and going along with a cooler air mass moving in. More on that forecast in a few minutes on KOMU 8 News at 6. Okay, thanks, Dave. 
Well, the first day of summer is causing more than just temperatures to heat up. So is Missouri law enforcement. KOMU 8's Cody LeGro is live near Interstate 70 to tell us how you can beat that heat. Cody? Reporting live in Columbia, Cody LeGro, KOMU 8 News. Well, come next Friday, folks parking downtown Columbia will notice a quarter doesn't buy as many minutes as it used to. KOMU 8's Brian Johnson reports how people are reacting to the city council's decision to double parking meter rates. Columbia. And the city council also voted to make parking in garages, though, free on Saturdays. University of Missouri Healthcare and University of Missouri Police are investigating a missing package containing patient billing information. The health system sent letters today informing 1,288 patients whose billing information was included in that lost package. It was sent by private courier from a Kansas City bank. University of Missouri Healthcare has now terminated its contract with that courier. A Versailles mother is outraged that a sewage backup in her son's apartment wasn't fully cleaned up for nearly a week. KOMU 8's Jamal Andrus has the story. I did that and I attached the picture. But you Jamal Andrus, KOMU 8 News, Versailles. The action management owner says the cleaning company he hired told him that the apartments were livable, but after Spatilla complained, he sent another crew out earlier today to finish the job. Well, the cicadas may be dying off, but Japanese beetles are just showing up. The bugs are coming out later than normal, and they're headed for your flowers if they haven't already arrived. Residents of Mill Creek Manor in West Columbia say they see more beetles than most neighborhoods in Columbia. The grubs have damaged residents' lawns, and the adult bugs have started chowing down on plants. In an 8 grows green, Goes Green segment, children can't escape the learning this summer. But they have a blast doing it. Now, your live Doppler 8 first alert weather with Chief Weathercaster Dave Sch A local volunteer is keeping his two-liter bottles and putting them into full throttle. That's right, KOMU 8's Cody LeGro tells us how in this 8 Goes Green report. All right, you're up. Michael York is in the process of working on his next project with athletic company Nike. He wants to turn old shoes into synthetic turf through the Reuse a Shoe project. Well, hundreds of cyclists rode from Sedalia to Boonville today as part of the 11th annual Katy Trail Ride. The entire ride will take cyclists from Clinton to St. Charles as part of the five-day event that attracts riders from around the world. Although the weather has been nice so far, the bikers worry about potential storms that could cause problems for the rest of the trip. Well, yesterday was kind of hot, mm -hmm. but um, it's better than getting rained on, which would be the worst, or if the river floods, which we're hoping it doesn't do. Cyclists will continue their ride tomorrow, biking the 51 miles between Boonville and Jefferson City. A deaf cyclist is pedaling through mid-Missouri today to raise awareness for a special cause. Dr. Murdoch Henderson has been cycling alone since May 30th when he started his trip in San Francisco. So far, he has traveled 2,600 miles to raise awareness for deaf education in South Africa through his organization. This afternoon, we caught up with him in California, Missouri. He's on his way to Washington, D.C. and hopes to be there by July 4th. A man has devoted his life to mid-Missouri sports, and today, Missouri gave back to him. Now, from the Ford Sports Desk, KOMU 8 Sports with Chris Gervino. Welcome back. In case you hadn't checked the calendar, today is the longest day of the year, the day of the summer solstice, the first day of summer. And ironically, our forecast looks more like spring. We get down to a cooler 63 overnight, partly cloudy, 76 tomorrow. You may have seen workers painting new center stripes on city streets today. Columbia Public Works paints the lines twice a year. Workers will be outlined striping the roads for the next four weeks. Crews will repaint the lines from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Mondays through Fridays. Drivers should avoid crossing freshly painted lines and driving too closely to the paint truck. Crews will paint the roads again late September or early October. Let's take a look at our photo finish now. Jerry Howard sends us a picture of a soothing sunset view from the backyard of his house, and that is a pretty one. Wow. Then Jessica Burry of Millersburg snapped a picture of cucumbers grown in the family garden. She says they're in the shape of a smiley face. Sarah Hill says they're in the shape of a U, reminiscent of the new U News coming up at 4 o'clock in September. Send us your photos and the stories behind them. We'll put them on KOMU 8 News at 5 and 6. The email address is right there. Share it at KOMU.com. Then coming up at 10, the Humane Society has taken record amounts of animals and are struggling to place them. And uninsured residents of Sedalia are looking at a new option to help them recover from the tornado. We'll see you at 9 and then 10 o'clock.